Hey guys, it's Luke Yon, and today I'm going to be filming my Christmas book haul. It might end up being a haul in the end, because I might show some of the other stuff that I got. Actually, no, because some of it is downstairs. So this is going to be a Christmas book haul. Um, but in the thumbnail, you do see all of the things that I got. So, yeah. I have quite a few books to show you. I have around 19, and I'm very grateful for all of them. Um, I don't usually put disclaimers, but, like, if you think I'm bragging, you do you, but I'm not. I just wanted to show this, because I always love watching these videos, so I thought, why not do my own? And so, that's what I'm doing. I'm in my Christmas pajamas, and I just feel like talking about these books, so that's what we're gonna do. And if you feel offended by it, I'm sorry, but... That's your issue. <laughs> so let's just get started. The first book that I have to show you is Snowball's Christmas by Kristen Mc... Mc... Oh my god. McCona. I think that's how you say it. I apologize if I said it wrong. But this book, I know very nothing about, but I... All these books I did ask for, so... I know, like, only bits and pieces, so... This one, I know it's about a cat named Snowball who narrates a story, and I think her humans, like, gets a boyfriend or something, and she sort of has to deal with him or something. I don't know. But I just thought the idea of a cat narrating a book is just such an in interesting idea. So that's why I got this book. But other than that, I know virtually nothing. The next book that I have is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle. This book, um, I know follows Anne Boleyn and maybe Henry VIII? I mean, I'm, I'm sure Henry VIII makes an appearance because it's Anne Boleyn. But, um, I really don't know much about this series other than that. Other than, like, what I told you. And I love that sort of time in English history, like the Tudor era, so I'm interested in this book. It is freaking long. I saw it in Barnes & Noble and then I looked up what it was about. And I was like, ooh, that's interesting. But I don't think I noticed how much it is. Um, how long it is. It's like over 600 pages. So this is definitely a chunker, and it's the first book in a trilogy, so... Love that, but, um, I know this book won the Man Booker, and then its sequel won the Man Booker as well, and then I think the third book in the trilogy was, uh, shortlisted, so that's interesting, but yeah, I really know not much else besides that, other than, yeah, the 1520s, so, um, that was, like, around the time when Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII got together, I think, to my memory. Um, also, I know that there's a TV show about this, so maybe I can read the book and then watch the TV show, but, um, I'm very interested, nonetheless. Next, I have One Day in December by Josie Silver. Um, I think this is book is about, like, two people who see each other, like, on the train, and then they spend time trying to find each other again. I really don't know other than that. Like, it, it has December in the title. Everyone was loving this book when it came out, I think, in 2018. Um, it was a Reese's Book Club pick, and it was a number one New York Times bestseller, so... I mean, that sounds promising, and I just heard that it's really cute, and I want some more Christmassy romance, so... I'm definitely interested in this one. It's the same sort of situation with the next book that I have, which is The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler. Um, this, I know, takes place in Alaska at a cabin, I believe, like a ski cabin, and these two people are there for different reasons, and they meet up, and then... I don't know if they're snowed in or not, but, um, I don't know. It, I think they're just gonna be in the Alaskan wilderness, and I know this is the first of a series, um, I, of, like, unconnected books, I think, like, they're, I think they're, um, companion series, that is the word, okay, companion series, so I know this is the first of a companion series. Other than that, not much. <laughs> the next book I do know what this is about, kind of, and that is The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Coel. I first heard about this book from Cindy from Read with Cindy, and it had been on my radar since then, but I never, like, actually looked into it very much, and then I just decided, like, you know, I want to read this book. I want to get more into adult books, and this is one of them. But this book follows a group of women, and they are in the NAS program in the 50s, the early 50s, and, um, basically climate change has gotten, it's an alternate history, and climate change has gotten so bad that we need to figure out how to colonize this like colonized space and these women it sort of follows the intersectionality of it all how they are sort of ostracized because of their gender and also because of their race and their mental health and things like that um uh even though they are perfectly capable to go 
be in the space program and as capable as their male counterparts, but because of their gender and, like, their other, like, their race and mental health, as I said, they are sort of secluded and not seen as equal. So, um, this is the first in a series as well. I heard that it's really good, and I'm interested in it, and I think that it will be a good sci-fi to read, because I don't read much sci-fi, so I think this will be an easy one to get through. Next, I have The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. No, I still not read this. My mom has read it, and I believe... No, my dad just saw the movie, but, um, all I know about this book is that it follows a man named Robert Langdon, who is a symbologist, and I think something, yeah, at the Louvre, at the Louvre, and, um, I don't know, stuff happens. I remember reading, like, two, the first 200 pages of Angels and Demons, which is, like, the first book in the series. They're, some of them are unconnected, but this is, like, you can read this first if you want. Um, but yeah, I'm interested in this. Um, I was Leonardo da Vinci for the Wax Museum in, um, second grade, so, oh, yeah. Um, I know a little bit about him, as much as a second grader would, but, like, one who didn't, you know, like, I had as many resources as a second grader could have. Um, so yeah, and more than 80 million copies sold, and I know it was a movie with Tom Hanks, and I heard that the movie is awful, but I'm still probably gonna read it just to see <laughs> what it's about. So, yeah, this is the next book that I have, and I'm excited to read it soon, because I like puzzles and stuff, and I heard that the Gilded Wolves is often compared to the Da Vinci Code, so you know I like anything Gilded Wolves. Next, I have The Shadow Cabinet by Maureen Johnson. This is the third book in the Shades of London series. I read the first book in April, and then I read the second book in October, and I'm excited to delve into this book. It is the, um, the last one that is currently out. There is supposed to be a fourth book sometime in the future, but, um, it's not out yet, and I really enjoy this series. Um, it's not as great as Maureen Johnson's other series, which is Truly Devious. Y'all know that I love Truly Devious. I talk about it as much as I can on my channel, but um, this is still a really solid series if you like ghosts, but, like, it's not scary. It's just kind of, like, if you like ghosts and you like London and you like the idea of boarding schools, definitely check this book this series out. I think it's really good, it's really immersive. I really enjoy Maureen Johnson's books. I read quite a few of them at this point, and she never really disappoints. So yeah, I'm very excited to delve into this book sometime soon and see what Rory gets up to, because this girl is having some issues. <laughs> Next, I have Comfort and Joy by Kristen Hanna. This is a small, it says a fable on it, so I'm guessing this is like a smaller book. Um, I, if you watched my Vlogmas vlog, the one that, like, my first Vlogmas vlog, um, you will know that I cried <laughs> over two of Kristen Hanna's books, Winter Garden and The Nightingale. The Nightingale is, like, my favorite book of the year so far, and I'm filming this on, like, the 29th, so I don't think anything will bump it, but, um, all I know is that this book is a Christmassy book, and, um, it is quite short. It is just over 250 pages, so I'm sure that I'll be able to read this quite fast, and I'm just excited to see what this is about and read more of her beautiful writing. Then I have The Other Queen by Philippa Gregory. This book follows Mary Queen of Scots in her years of captivity, and specifically during her captivity with Bess of Hardwick and Bess's husband George Talbot. Um, this sort of follows that time, which is not something you see very often in Mary Queen of Scots books, and I'm really interested to see what will happen, because this is, I've never read a Philippa Gregory book before, but I feel like this is the one I'm most interested in. I just recently found out about it, so yeah, that's interesting, but I love Mary Queen of Scots. I think she's such an interesting um, person. She's my favorite historical figure, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to delve into this story and see how I enjoy it, and if, um, if it lives, if it's historically accurate, because I know a lot about Mary Queen of Scots, and I feel like if it's not historically accurate, I might get a little bit annoyed, but, um, I'm gonna go in with an open mind. Next, I have The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood, and I bought this book, um, because, or I asked for it, because I read the first, like, couple chapters in Barnes & Noble, and I was like, this is so freaking weird that I need to read the book, and 
yeah, I'm really excited to read it. Basically, all I know is that, like, in the prologue, the main character was like, yeah, um, a couple of days after the war, my sister drove off cliff, no biggie, and then, like, the next chapter is, like, a book that is written by her sister or something, and it's, like, a blending of genres, and it takes place in the 40s, right? Yes, 1945. So, yeah, I'm interested in seeing what the hell this is about, because it sounded super freaking weird, and it was weird when I read it, um, in Barnes & Noble, so... I'm interested to see what Margaret Atwood does with this concept, and I believe this, yeah, it won the Man Booker Prize as well, so, yeah. I think I'm just, this is a theme of this book haul. <laughs> Next, I have a book that everyone loves, and I've been meaning to read for a while, and that is The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. All I know about this story is that it follows a man named A.J. Fickery who owns a bookstore, and then I think he become he ends up adopting a child, or like, a child shows up at the bookstore or something. I don't know, and then there's like a collection of Edgar Allan Poe poems that like goes missing or something, or like that he finds, or, I don't know. All I know is that people love this book, and like this is a book where like if you like reading, you will love this book, so I think I'm really interested in it. Also I love how the cover, like in the store window, you can see the book in the store window, so I think that's a really cool touch, and I'm just excited to read this book and hopefully cry. Because I love doing that in books. <laughs> Next, I have a book from one of my favorite author duos, and that is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren is two authors, Christina and Lauren, and they pair up to write romance books. They wrote my favorite romance book of all time, uh, The Unhoneymooners, and they also wrote Twice in a Blue Moon and um, The Honey Don't List and a ton of other books, and this is their newest one, and it follows a girl named... Maylin, and I think it's like a Groundhog Day situation where she keeps reliving Christmas over and over again, and that seems like a really interesting concept to me, and I've never seen that done. It probably has been done before, but I'm excited to read it because I love their romance books, and I've heard really great things about this book, and I'm just excited to delve into it, and I feel like it'll be really cute and Christmassy, and I'm just excited to see what it's all about. Okay, so the next thing I have is not like a book. It was just in the stack, um, and it is a book journal. Um, my dad got this for me, it's just a notebook. I just wanted to show this off because I think it's really cool in the back design. I'm a fan. Next I have a very anticipated release, and that is A Sky Beyond the Storm by Subba Tahir. I talked about how in one of my videos, in a couple of my videos, how I have just read the Ember and the Ash series, or I read it in May, and I absolutely loved it and I'm so excited to read the finale. I'm probably going to binge reread the first uh, three books and then read this one, probably in May as well, um, for the Asian Readathon if um, Read with Cindy hosts it again. But yeah, I'm so excited about this book. I can't really talk about it a lot because, I mean, obviously I can't talk about it because it is spoilery, um, but yeah, this is the fourth and final book and I'm so excited. I. Ooh, I cannot wait to see what happens to Lia and Elias and how their story concludes, and I just know Saba Tahir has been working on this book for so long, and I I trust her to give me a good finale, and I'm extremely excited to see what happens. Next, I have the Caraval Collector's Edition by Stephanie Garber. This, I still haven't taken it out of the plastic, but I love Caraval. Um, I think it's a really great series. I know that's kind of an unpopular opinion but I don't care. Um, yeah, I still haven't taken it out of the plastic, but basically this is like a slip case, and then the book is in here, and I mainly wanted this because it has a sneak peek of the next book that Stephanie Garber is writing, and I just want more. So yeah, I'm really excited to have this and keep it in my collection. I just think it's so beautiful, and I like, I don't know when I'm going to take the plastic off, but for now I'm just going to let it and let it sit in all its glory. Next, I have The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is the 75th anniversary edition, um, which is really cool. Um, I don't know a lot about this book, and I know, don't kill me, but my cousins have been, like, wanting me to read this series so badly for so long, and I know this isn't, like, this is, like, a prequel to The Lord of the Rings, right? I don't know anything, but, um, it looks interesting, and I've heard awful things about J.R.R. Tolkien, but also great things, obviously. I mean, he's such a popular author. And this is a really nice edition of The Hobbit, 
and I mean, look at that map. We love to see it. But I did try to watch Lord of the Rings with my cousins, and I promptly fell asleep like 20 minutes in. But I heard that the books are better than the movie, which makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I'm just really excited to delve into this universe. And I don't know when I will get around to reading this book, but I hope it is sometime soon. And let me know if you guys want me to, like, vlog that, because I feel like it could be interesting getting my thoughts on, like, such a popular series. So, let me know if you want to see that. Next, I have a book that I ordered in, like, the summer, and it just finally arrived. And that is... The Adventures of a Curious Cat by Curious Zelda. <laughs> An amazing piece of American literature. The next great American book. I don't know why I bought this book. I love cats. I mean, as you know, with the Snowball's Christmas, um, I think a book narrated by a cat is so interesting. And this is actually a picture book. How iconic is that? <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know anything about this book, but... I want to read it, because why not? I mean, come on. Come on. You know I couldn't resist. Okay, we're down to the last couple of books. This next one is now the longest book that I own, and it is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I know. <laughs> um, this is, like, the fantasy book of, like, the past couple of decades. I think this book came out... When did this come out? Like, 2010? I don't know. I heard that this isn't, like, the first, um, uh... Brandon San like, adult Brandon Sanderson book that you're supposed to read. You're supposed to read, like, some of his other, like, Cosmere books first. And I might, but I feel like I just kind of want to delve into this one, because I'm not super interested in, like, Mistborn or that other stuff. So maybe I'll just watch some reviews, and then just sort of so I can get an idea, and then read this book. So this book is the first in what will be a ten book series, and each book is over a thousand pages long. And they come out, like, every three to four years, because he obviously needs time to write it. And, um, I'm probably gonna end up, the last book is probably gonna come out when I'm, like, graduated from grad school or something. Actually, no, more than that. I'll probably be, like, freaking 30 or something. I don't know, but I heard this is, like, the new Game of Thrones. I don't know much about it other than that is, like, epic, epic fantasy. So, excited for that. Yeah, I'm really interested to read this. Also, my mom pointed out that this looks like Moses, and I cannot get that out of my head. And I don't know if it was intentional or not, probably not, but I will forever <laughs> think of Moses when I look at this book cover. Next, I have The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse by Charlie Mac... Mackesy? I have no idea what this book is about, but um, my mom and I looked at it at Barnes & Noble, and we were like, let's buy that, and then put it under the tree. And that's what we did. And, yeah, I heard that people just absolutely love this book, and so I'm interested in reading it. It has a really cool illustration style, and I don't want to, like, flip through yet, but, um, I might read this on, like, New Year's Eve or something, so that I can, like, have one final book for the end of the year. Maybe it'll bump the Nightingale, I don't know. I heard that people, like, say, quote this as, like, their favorite book of all time. So, yeah, um, I'm guessing there will be a boy, a mole, a fox, and a horse in this book, but don't want to get my hopes up, so... Yeah, I'm interested to read this, and I'm very excited to have it now. And then the final book in this haul is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. Um, I know this is a contemporary book about a girl who basically gets the power to, like, cast karma on people. I mainly bought this book because I love Marissa Meyer, and I will read anything she writes. I am a little apprehensive, though, because I love Marissa Meyer for what she's written before, which is, like, sci-fi and fantasy, and... This is a contemporary book, and I'm a little bit apprehensive, but I'm also interested to see what she does with, um, contemporary, so, yeah, that is it, um, and I'm really excited to read this, maybe, it, it feels like a really good summer read, so, yeah, I'm definitely excited to get to this, hopefully, around, like, next summer, so, yeah. But that is it for this very, very long haul. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you had a really great Christmas if you celebrate. I'm very grateful for having all these books, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've read any of these books and you recommend them, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to get some recommendations. So, yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!